we we're gonna pull this up. we're gonna do the segment on this one we're gonna do it norm mcdonald this man. is the best oh vince foster deputy white house counsel yeah, have deputy you ever house seen house. the norm mcdonald on the view bill clinton murdered a guy oh boy let's uh barbara let's just... walters is look at her you gotta see her you're supposed to see him uh, yeah, that's a little desperate isn't it <laughs> let's jump that's to uh, a clip of a lie or a crook murder or anything like that. i love george bush man he's a good man decent you know none of this false <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's, uh, you know, he's not a, a liar or a crook murderer or anything like that. So it would be good to get the, see, I, I, don't, I think we should get the homicide out of the White House and get like a, a, a fresh start because we don't want any more murderers. I think no, we, we should just go on to the next question. Oh, <laughs> oh my. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Clinton, he murdered a guy. Spicy. Wow. <laughs> you know, I'm going to have no accusations without That's a little Charlie. too far. That's the way it does let's work. Just, let's far. just go on to the next question. Oh, okay. <laughs> Oh, all right. This is not my week. Wait, what he pushes it. Hold on, a little longer. Oh, it's not mine either, and I'm being very nice, okay? <laughs> Be a good boy. Now, Norm. Do you never hear that? No. Listen, Norm, we don't need I to don't talk about this. this. And I don't want to hear it, and this is not the place to make those accusations. And you're supposed to be funny. Let's get on. He is. He is funny. There you go. This is a live show. But you have been properly chastised by Barbara. So I'm not going to ask the next question. I thought it was a matter of record. No, I'm not. <laughs> Look, okay. let me do this, okay? okay? I'll tell you what's a matter of record. You will not be invited back if you don't shut up. Uh, All right, uh, now. He was never invited back. Really? Okay, let's talk football. All right, man, manslaughter. Let's talk football. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Did you ever hear the word? Oh, I oh. I certainly hope that somebody calling to tell you to go home. Oh, no. Dude, you got a phone ringing. This oh. is the producer. He gives it out. <laughs> um. Answer the phone. Hello? Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, no. Uh, the thing is this. There, uh, you know Matt Strauss? Yeah, the producer. <laughs> the producer. He told me it would be funny. He said, like, why don't you carry a cell phone on and then let it ring and then have, pretend like there's a guy on it. Is there anybody oh on it? No, it's a pr thing. Pretend. You know what, Norm? <laughs> what? Is that, is that the, uh, dip, that's the... That's the end of it. But, but it's funny. <laughs> that, that you make a, a really good point in there, though. She says, let's talk about football. Because, listen, I used to love professional sports, but that is what distracts us, Tim, from really what's going on. They give us bread and circuses. Oh, my gosh, I'm going to drink my beer on Sunday and watch the Dallas Cowboys lose for the, you know, 100th straight I, year. I, I, you know... When I was younger, I was very much like I wish people stopped focusing on the on the sports and paid attention to politics. Huh. But now that no. <laughs> really really dumb people are treating politics like sports, I'm like mm, maybe that was a bad idea. Yeah, but sports. Listen, LeBron James, he's never read past the first page of a book. No, and he I mean, votes and he gets political and he comes out and he campaigns and it's like stop, please, please stop. You don't read. You don't know what you're talking about. But who does he defend the most? China. So right. uh, my my point being is sports are great. It's part of American culture. China. Baseball. Yeah, <laughs> we got it. China. I don't do good impressions. But what I'm saying is sports are important. I think for the youth, it gives them some sort of structure. I think you know skateboarding, anything. I'm saying any athletic prowess is good for young people instead of sitting and just playing a game. Um, speaking of, I want to actually make this point see this is what i envision the future is i actually believe believe that we're going to have some sort of vanilla sky um matrix future where people are going to be so their lives are going to be so you know tumultuous outside of it that they're going to actually convince people to plug into what is called the metaverse very similar to the matrix and they're going to say listen we're going to intubate you and in the metaverse ian you're going to have uh, you know, a ten inch. You know what? You're gonna. Uh, you know, you're gonna have. You're gonna be dating a supermodel. All the people. So, that, so, so it would be smaller. Yeah, okay. Yeah, would, would I'm not taking that deal. <laughs> okay, but what I'm saying is, uh, uh, my point being is that you're gonna have a beautiful supermodel life, and instead of living your 72 years on average here on Earth, you're gonna live for a thousand years. And you can look this up. They're actually talking about prison sentences for people where you can make somebody think that they had a 10,000 year sentence a, in a in a week. You could be in it right now. Mm. You could. You know, you're like really wondering tortured. why your life sucks, why you're poor, and it's like you're in jail. Oh. You know? But what my point being is, is is the you know, the technology that they're gonna have. And there's a thing called the uncanny valley. And actually, uh, I forget the exact term for it, but like AT and T, Verizon, what they do is they try to actually get like when you call a um, a robot basically to try to get customer service, they're trying to create technology where you can't tell that you're talking to a robot. And they can't do it. If they're ever tested, they can't do it because there's a thing called Uncanny Valley where they right. can't make it exactly like a human. It's not going to have the same 
speech pattern. It's you're always someday be able they to tell. will though. Maybe. Well, you say that. You say that, and that's why I, I don't necessarily think they will because I think it's almost impossible. And the reason why is you say, oh, artificial intelligence will be able to create that. Really, artificial intelligence just takes basically it can make future decisions for you based on past decisions. But the idea that it can be you and me, there's some sort of uniqueness about us that I do believe is impossible to recreate. And I think that could be our soul personally. But I just there's, think it's almost impossible. There's it's artificial movie. emotion. There's a there's a movie where they invent there's like eye drops. Was it a movie or a show? I don't know. And then it simulates an experience. And so like this woman like puts the eye drops in, and then in the span of like ten minutes, she spends a weekend in Aspen. And then her business partner is like, I've got a better use for this prison sentences. That's mm-hmm. nice. <laughs> and then she's like, You can't do this, and then they fight, and then she like pins him down and she like, you know. He like puts the drop in her eye and forces her into like a thousand year prison chamber. It's like all psychological, so there's literally no way to escape. Black you could hair? also make Crazy. it where it 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 happened like you experience ten seconds in the metaverse, but when you come out, it's seventy years later in real well, life. Well, you'd be dead though. Yeah, yeah, that that's a way to like comatose people. So here here's a thought. Here's a thought. What if your life, your mundane life, where you're trying to live right, you're trying to be a good person, you're resisting all this woke communism garbage in reality? You are a woke communist who was involved in some Antifa violence, and so you are sentenced to re- rehabilitation, where they make you live a life on the other side to experience violence from them. So then, when you finally come out, you're like, "I can't stand those people," and then you're like, "Whoa, yeah. I was those people. Now I get it." And you've been reprogrammed. Well, it's like Inception. But I'll be honest. You know, we talk about the prison industry, and you know, a lot of people on the conservative side will say systemic racism doesn't exist. But for me, I do believe it exists because you look at a lot of the nonviolent drug offenders in jail are African American or Black. So I do think we have a prison system, a private prison industry in America that's a huge business. It goes along with a lot of the military industrial complex, the pharmaceutical industrial complex. Once again, it's the American people being sold out to corporations to make money. This guy's a liberal. A kind of, and I, I, I wouldn't be against universal health care in some form, not necessarily the way they want it, but I'm saying at least less taxes. There should be a way where people are so afraid. Tim, I know a lot of people I'm in the bail bond business. We actually get people out of jail, so that's why prison reform's a big deal to me. But I know people that are afraid to call an ambulance and will take an Uber to the hospital because they can't afford an ambulance. So I'm not saying Canada's system's good. I don't know what system. I'm not that smart right now. Dude, I took, I took a taxi to the hospital once. Exact. See? Yeah. <laughs> right no there. I called a cab. I, I had a uh, I had a kidney stone and it hit me like all of a sudden out of nowhere, crippling pain. And I was like, quick, call Green Cab Uber. Think about that, Tim. You should have been able to call an ambulance. I agree completely. So. And uh, I'm like, dude, 50 bucks in an Uber or 500 in an ambulance? It's, uh, more, than it's more than 500, I right. believe. Yeah, I, I don't like um, chronic uh, health care. Universal health care for chronic stuff like someone eats too much, you Universal know, sour gonna patch suck. kids. You know, it's going to suck, but it, I just feel like it's a better alternative if a kid breaks his arm instead of some mom being like, yeah, but how am I going to pay for it? Emergency health care. Emergency is, universal health care. But chronic is, where it's like they don't stop eating poison and then they get sick. It's like, dude, you did that to yourself. Well, but, I'm right, not here. Right, but, right. I got to say this point. Why is, why is diabetes medicine, you know, $170 in America, but in Mexico it's $5? Why is dental care the same thing? Why is it that all of my ANCAP friends are like, oh, I got to get my teeth fixed. I'll be flying, uh, you know, uh, to Mexico City or something. Costa Rica. Costa Rica, especially. Well, they argue no- that it's cosmetic, not medical. Right. That's It's nonsense. And the, here's the crazy thing, too. In Mexico and in Costa Rica, they do this thing where after they do the work on your teeth, they take your own blood and, and put it over the, the damaged part of your mouth from the surgery and it heals way faster. Wow. Yeah. Your own blood because it, it heals you, right? They don't do that here as far as I know. I was talking to somebody and I looked it up and I was like, if you go to Costa Rica, it's like a tenth of the price with better treatment. I'm like, that doesn't make sense. Tim, what doesn't make sense is that we prescribe antidepressants to people that are suicidal. That makes you more suicidal. <laughs> I know. It's the first <laughs> freaking side effect in the commercial. Sense, You'll yeah. see somebody dancing in a field. Oh, it may cause suicidal idolization or idealization. It's like, what? You're giving that to people that are suicidal? I mean, isn't that counterintuitive? Yeah. This is what bothers me about the war machine. Teens especially. This is why I brought oh, up the, the war machine. Oh, the younger the better, dude. They I, want to get you on it. Too. As, the sooner you get on the antidepressants, the better it'll heal you. But as soon as they came out, mental health issues skyrocketed. Shocking. What are the chances? I can accept that we have a, that there is a war machine that the United States is in, in control of. But what happens when corporations try to take control of it and and poison and subdue the population through other kinds of means, nonviolent means like like psychedelic psychoactives? That's not cool. I don't want to lose control of the war machine. By point by going after our own people, false flags, 
pharmaceutical induction like that i'm not com- comfortable with I- I'm-, I'm down to hold on to the military and make sure that we have a stable planet where the hungry people aren't rioting and destroying everyone else to steal their food but man, the pharmaceutical industry pisses me off. Of course, but but I do want to say my favorite thing: McDonald's French fries. So I do. I'm thankful for the really? genetically mo- modified. Uh, yeah, you know, good. Yeah, and that, and that golden corn. Yeah. McDonald's. I don't understand how people eat McDonald's. Oh, I don't gross, get. It. But I, it's no, I, no, no, no. I get Burger King. Burger King. Makes, I like BK. Have you had yeah. a sausage McGriddle? Yes, I just think it's, it's terrible. Good. Wow. There is not a single item at McDonald's I think tastes good. Tim, they Burger inject King? the pancake with syrup. All right, which I love <laughs> that cool. method. Listen, Burger, <laughs> but it gets like Burger King. No, it doesn't. Burger King, I find delicious but disgusting. Wendy's, I find delicious and not that bad. Pretty good. Chick Fil A, yeah. as Lydia pointed out the other day, actually probably the best. Oh, yeah. really Chick Fil A is good. It's like premium stuff. Yeah, but it's not gay enough, but, so but, you can't go there. Yeah. Now, well, now it is now. They've <laughs> like they've they're gay. The chickens are gay. Postmates. They started supporting all these organizations. Yeah, I'm pretty they sure. Did. Well, you're talking about so, Postmates, yeah. and I want to thank Postmates oh, because gosh, they have a bottom friendly menu, and that's so oh, good. Yeah, yeah, we love the bottom friendly menu. That's that. well, you don't want to you don't want to poop all over the place. No, uh, no, no. But uh, McDonald's, <laughs> to me, it is. It, it's all tastes like plastic and chemicals. I just, I just, I don't exactly. So and, and you know, it's created in a lab to do that. That's why it has <laughs> a mechanism in your taste buds. You're like, mm-hmm. oh, this is addicting. And the more you eat McDonald's, the more you crave McDonald's. So you know, you know what the worst thing is. The mayonnaise at McDonald's is like flavorless slime. Yeah, really. Flavorless. Burger King Never had is good. It. Well, you see those chicken nuggets, that pink slime? Ooh, it's delicious when it hits oh your lips. Gosh. Because the chemical reaction in your brain, it's like, you know, almost like crack cocaine. It causes, okay. you know, a euphoric sensation to some people. You know what I had today? Mm-hmm. I had tuna. It's funny, so... Uh, you're very the trim, though, Tim. I didn't realize you're in good well, shape. Why well, I lost a lot of weight oh, yeah. since, since uh, November of last year. I stopped eating sugar, grains, cut out the wheat. The wheat apparently is like the worst part. It's inflammatory, I guess. I don't, I'm not a nutritionist. I don't know a lot. Well, you look all, good. All I know is I was like, I don't want to eat the bread or the rice or the fried anymore. So I started eating a lot of chicken wings. That's like 70% of my diet right what, now. In an air fryer or what? No, just regular chicken wings. But like, do you bake them? Because you said no fried. I just go to the restaurant and say, give me chicken wings. I love I it. I like Old Bay wings. Like, so there's no extra sauce or anything on them. Old Bay rocks. Yeah, Old yeah, Bay rocks. It's delicious. Convert. Yeah, no, 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 of course. And then uh, uh, for breakfast, I've been doing, like, we have our farm fresh eggs. Like, the chickens poop them out. I just eat that <laughs> with, like, some, uh, some, like, local cheese or something. People have been You're talking about how uh, the Keto-ish U.S. The in particular part, yeah. has a very deep like food quality problem compared to the eu because we don't have strict enough regulations from the fda and our our regulatory agencies i think it's the way around you think the eu is too strict no we are too strict yeah we are yeah so uh so like our eggs are like what are they like stripped bleached and like our milk mm-hmm. is so processed as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Raw milk is Our illegal in some right. states. Yeah, yeah. Raw, come on, raw milk is illegal. Yeah. That's you a know crime. what else is illegal? Uh, wine berries. <laughs> That's right. Is they that are. true? Yeah. We have yeah. Yeah. So I took in a bunch of illegal berries. Or please don't arrest yeah. me. No, they're illegal in New York <laughs> in and New Connecticut. York. What if you ate one here and went back to New York and they're like, it's in your system, isn't oh my it? Gosh. Yeah, wow. We're testing well, you for great. wine berries. Get down. So yeah, wine raspberries are everywhere. They're invasive. They're thick brambles and they grow like crazy and they're delicious, by the way. People love it. But in New York and Connecticut, they're illegal to possess or mm-hmm. sell or trade yeah, or whatever. Yeah, but fentanyl's not. That's decriminalized. So, yeah. <laughs> well, that's the, the funny berries. thing. I'd be willing to bet if you were in New York and you like brutally beat someone, they'd let you out of jail. But if you're caught with wine berries, they'd oh, be boy. like, ooh, serious violation. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that just shows you the hypocrisy of the rules in New York and, you know, a big district, like we said, AOC, who's the queen of New York. You know, people are literally defending their bodegas and going to jail. There's a, there's a point that I made the other day. Uh, so we ordered this, uh, uh, like, you can order these, like, food things. Um, one of the things that we promote on the podcast version of the show is the Moink Box, and it's like farm fresh meats yeah. delivered right to your door. And so we got one of those, but with seafoods, like scallops, prawns, fish. And I'm eating this wild white Alaskan salmon that is so delicious. Mm-hmm. And that's all it is. You know, there's, like, lemon pepper on it with some, like, avocado and stuff. Tim, do you use an air fryer? I hope you're using an air fryer. Do you have an air fryer in this house? Yeah, it's but the best I'm not going to air appliance. fry salmon. Actually, they say it's good in there. Just I don't eat it. salmon. No, I swear. They, they but, say you can air fry. It's delicious. Here, what, what I said was, this is an expensive thing to order, like, to order this wild-caught salmon to, like, to your door. And then I'm like, it's funny. If you're, like, well-off in America, you're eating food quality up here. If you're middle to lower class, you're eating food quality way down here. If you live in South America and Africa, you're eating food quality way up here. It's crazy that the poorest people in the world, not everywhere, not, not some of them are eating mud, but there are areas where people have like mud huts, but they walk out, catch a fish and are eating fresh caught salmon. 
and that is better quality food than the mac and cheese McDonald's stuff that people are eating in this country. And Americans get sick when they go to countries like that because they're not used to eating real food. Thanks for checking out this clip from TimCast IRL. Come hang out live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Super chat. We'll even answer some of your questions. If you want to check out the After Hours Censored show, Go to TimCast.com and become a member. We put those up Monday through Thursday at 11 p.m. They're very funny, not very family friendly. We'll love to see you there. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.